boom, a calculator, and it's amazing, wow! And this one's called the Calc 9, because it can add 1 to 9 digit numbers up to 999,999,999. And this one looks a lot different to the previous one, which was the Calculatron 3001. As you can see, the numbers are now different, they are just like 3x3 three three quartz numbers, and they still have the buttons in the corners, like the last one. The display is now on the left of the buttons instead of on top. And instead of like the blinking ready light on the side that tell you when you can put in another number, it has this new cursor system that I made. And it also has an overflow light if you go over the highest number, which is what I just said like five seconds ago. So anyways, let's just see how this works. I'm gonna do this in sections. First, I'm gonna show you how the number typing thing works. Then I'm gonna show you the clear button, aka the debug button, aka the button that causes all the bugs that it needs to debug. And the third thing I'm going to show you is the addition and subtraction. And then after that, I'm going to just show you how the redstone all works and do an in-depth explanation and compare it to the last design and explain why this one is 10 times millions better. Okay, so first thing, let's just type in a few numbers and see how it types in. So I'm just going to do one and it's going to start counting so this is going to become a one and then the cursor is going to move to the right any second now so basically what it does is it counts a specific number of times so it can count one or nine times well one to nine times and then after it's counted it has enough delay for it to count like nine times that's why it takes a long time and it moves the cursor to the right. So now we're on this digit. So now we can type in another number. So let's type in seven, and this is a higher number. So it's gonna take a bit longer to count. And this thing is gonna take faster to move over. So there's three, four, five, six, and seven. And it's gonna move over one spot to the right. And another thing you can do is if you push the zero button, it's basically like a space bar. All it does is it just moves the cursor to the right and now this is zero because all of them are set to zero by default. So the next one, we can just like type in nine to see how long it takes for the cursor to move over when it's set to nine. So because this is the nine, because this is the highest number, it's gonna take a lot longer to count but as soon as this thing turns nine, it's going to move the cursor over basically instantly. So there's eight and we're gonna wait a little bit and nine and it moved it over pretty fast. And that's basically how typing numbers works. So second feature, the clear button, aka the bug button. So basically what the clear button does is it clears the display. So it sets them all to zeros, it clears the plus or minus thing if they're on. It also turns off the overflow light if it was on, and it also reset the cursors, and this cursor will go back to the first cursor, unless the there's server leg, which is the first bug, and it goes to the second cursor because that does sometimes happen. And let's just clear the display, and you'll also see another bug that's in, his, in this system. It's fixable, you can like, do a little thing that I'm going to show you, but it's pretty, like, it's not fixable, like, internally. You can't really fix it. I don't know why, but this should reset to the first one. And it's just due to server lag, so I'm just going to kind of, like, stay here. There we go. So now, as you can see, it reset almost, except for this spot, which is where the one was, and now it's a nine. So basically how you fix that problem, if there's, like, an eight or a nine or something, you basically want to turn it into a zero so what you're gonna do is you're going to put a one here and it's going to turn into a zero the overflow light is gonna turn on because you technically made it overflow it's gonna do some weird subtraction stuff we're just gonna wait for this cursor to move over and then once the cursor moves over we can reset the system again so let's just clear it again and all the numbers are going to clear, and I'm going to stay over here. And these are the lines that activate the lights, so I'm going to kind of stay here, just so it doesn't bug out. So, it should. 
only be that redstone block lifting up. So now we gotta wait a little bit. And this should reset like normal. And there are a few visual bugs, as you can see. I moved over and it fixed itself. So now it's a bunch of zeros and that's how it, you reset it and also how you fix the possible bugs. So now we're gonna talk about how you can add and subtract numbers and you can do big numbers, small numbers, no numbers if you really want to, but you can't do negative numbers because then it'll kind of screw up and it'll kind of like cycle on itself. I don't know, it just can't do negative numbers. So we're gonna do um, two two digit numbers or maybe one two digit number and one one digit number. And we're gonna add and subtract them. So let's just push the zero a bunch of times until we get to the tenth spot. And we're gonna type in a number. So we're almost there. You can uh, sort of make this go fast. Like, if you want to know how fast it goes, you just have to wait for that repeater to turn turn off. And then as soon as it turns off, you can push the button again. So there we go. Now it's in the tenth spot and we can put some numbers in so we're gonna put a 1 here and this is going to become 10 so the calculator knows that you put a 1 in the 10th spot so now you basically just wrote a 10 so now we have to wait for this to cycle over it's gonna take a while like I said and there we go now we're in the ones place and we can put in another number like a 2 so now that you added a 2 in the 1's place and a 1 in the 10th place, it's going to become 12. And it's going to do a cursor reset just like it did when you push the clear button. So that means it's going to cycle over to the first one, then scroll through all of them, and then cycle over to the first one again. So I'm just going to show you what that looks like. I'm just going to speed this part up too. So as you can see, it's now in the, oh, I pushed the wrong button. It's now in the first position and it's now ready for you to t put in another number. So before we put in another number, we have to push plus or minus. If you wanna do addition, it already technically adds by default, so you don't need to push it. But for the sake of demonstrating, I'm going to push the addition button and I'm gonna push this bottom button. And it's going to do another cursor reset. So the cursor is gonna go all the way to the end and then back to the first position and this plus sign came on over here and now we just have to wait again so now it's finally back in the first position and now we can put zero in a bunch of times until it gets back to here so this time we're gonna add 9 to 12 and that's gonna give us the answer of 21 and just because I want to show you that it can carry over and it can add to like the previous one so it's going to carry over and become 20 and then add one more and become 21. I'm just going to, I'm adding 9 just to, so you can see that happen. So we're almost there. It's almost at the 2. So because we're adding 9 and it's a one digit number, we're not going to worry about the 1 there and we're just going to add 9. So there we go. We're going to push the 9 and now we're going to see the magic happen. And you're gonna see a 2 change into a 1. Well, it's gonna start counting up first. So what it's gonna do is count up, become 9, then also count up to 0 and then to 1. So there we go. You're gonna see it carry. Now that 1 is gonna become a 2. And you got our answer, which is 21. So now we can start subtracting. So once this cursor resets, we're gonna push the subtraction button and it's going to do another cursor reset and because it did the last number it's also doing the cursor reset so we gotta wait a little bit until it gets to the first thing again come on hurry up ah. and there we go okay so now it's on the first digit again I'm gonna push the subtraction button which is this minus over here and I'm not gonna fall so basically now what it does is now it's going to change it to subtraction and it's gonna do another cursor reset 
But before we subtract the 21, I'm going to show you what subtracting, well, what negative subtracting would look like. So if we type in any number in this hundred millionth position, basically what it's going to try to do is subtract that amount from 21, which is a lot greater. And this is also the reason why it's automatically set to adding. So let's say we push in 9. So instead of counting forwards, it's going to count backwards. So 9, and then it's going to turn to 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, and then, yep, it's going to count all the way down to 1. And as you can see, the overflow light turned on because it technically went over that number. So that's basically what happens if you try to type in and it was in subtraction mode. So now we're gonna just push zero a bunch of times. I'm gonna skip this part again. So now we are in our ones place again and we are going to push nine again and it's going to subtract and it will become 12. So what's gonna do is start counting down. The two has now become a one and now the ones place is going to subtract all the way down to number two and it'll become 12 again so there we go it became 12 it's going to do another cursor reset <laughs> i don't know how many times i'm gonna have to say cursor reset because it does it a lot so it's gonna go to the first position scroll all the way down and then back to the first position again now because there are ones like i said this thing is really buggy and it'll make these into nines the reset is going to be a bit different, so let's just see what the reset's going to look like. So, come on, change. Change, please. Okay, now because there are multiple ones this time, and if we push the clear button, and there are also numbers near the one, it means that other numbers beside it are going to start carrying, and it's going to mess up some things. And I'm also going to stand over here because I don't want it to bug the cursor again so we're just gonna stay here near the redstone blocks so they don't start bugging the cursor and eventually that one will pop up and stay there good it stayed it's good and now we have an 8 over here and a 9 over here so now we want to make that 8 into a 0 we're gonna add 2 so it becomes technically 10 it's also going to activate the overflow light because you technically went over the limit but it's also going to subtract and do some weird stuff and now we have to wait for this cursor to move to the right and this is still going to do some funny subtracty stuff when it shouldn't so now what we're going to do is move the cursor over to the 9 and wow look at that it reset to 0 already so we're going to move the zero cursor back to the nine. So now it's finally on the nine and we're gonna add one this time so it becomes 10 and it's gonna do some weird carrying stuff again. But doesn't matter, this is how you gotta reset it properly so it doesn't screw up the entire calculator. So now that the entire reset has reset, we are going to reset it again. I know, sounds weird, but that's just how you gotta do it. And I'm just going to stand here because I don't want to screw it up again. And I'm just going to wait until this resets again. So as you can see, this time it bugged out and it went to the second cursor. So what you do if that happens, you just simply reset. This button is magical and it's kind of stupid. But that's basically how you got to do it. Because server lag exists and it's pretty annoying.
So that's basically the entire demonstration of how the calculator works. But now it's time for the explanation. But before we do that, let's just take a look at the redstone spaghetti madness that is this calculator. But as you can see, it looks a lot neater than the original calculator. Again, I'll put that video in the description. But it's a lot neater, like it's it just looks better despite having that magenta spaghetti mess. And let's just look at a few things before we explain the redstone. This entire calculator redstone thing is 50,116 blocks in volume. That's including like the air gaps in between. And if you want to just look at the little, I don't know, the color coding thing that I did, if you just want to know what each color means, this is it. I just put yellow there because there wasn't any yellow and it kind of looked ugly without yellow. But doesn't matter, no more colors, it's time to explain how this works. But before we do that, we're going to look at two of the components that are the most important, which is the display and a very special pulse multiplier. So first thing we'll do is look at the display, which you'll see there are a few of them over here. This is the best ever display that I've dis displayed, that I've shown on my channel already. It adds, subtracts, and carries, and does whatever you want. So this is the subtraction. I'm just subtracting it to show the carry. It can carry and subtract, and it can also add and carry. So we just subtracted. So it went to 99, but now it will go to 00, zero and I made an entire video on how you can build this 7 segment display, and I'll link that in the description. But now we got a second circuit over here, which is a pulse multiplier made by Meizuma Games, which I'll also link the video in the description because it's like genius. So basically, this is the entire pulse multiplier over here, and it runs on signal strength. So basically, we have some buttons over here, so if I push this button, it's going to give a signal strength of 15 into this machine, and I ran it into a dropper going into a chest, and as you can see, it pulses 15 times because there are 15 blocks in the chest. And if we just push this button, this will give a signal strength of 14, so if we just wait a little bit, boom, 14 items in the chest. So this is basically the heart of the entire calculator. It's like the smart bit. So 15, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. So this should give a signal strength of 9. So now we should have, okay, that wasn't 9. That was 10. Okay, I miscounted. But anyways, gave a signal strength of 10, and it worked just fine. So this is the heart of the thing. So now we're just going to look at where these two things are. So the displays are obvious where they are. There are these nine things over here. But the pulse multiplier, you may be wondering where, where it is. So because the pulse multiplier runs on signal strength, every single one of these input button panels, as you can see, they're all identical. And they also have no pistons because what I figured out was that pistons actually add like 1.5 ticks to the the pulse multiplier over there so it kind of ruined the pulse counting so there are no pistons here so all of these are redstone and repeaters and as you can see they all run into this one line and I also added this chest with a subtract a uh, comparator on subtract mode and this has I think a single strength of six and that basically means that it will subtract whatever these actual pulse signal strength is by six. So for example, that didn't make sense, but I'll just show an example. This is supposed to be a signal strength of nine, but because it's over here, it's a signal strength of 14. And we don't want 14, we want a signal strength of nine. So what this um, comparator does over here, it subtracts the right amount, so it gives a signal strength of nine and not a signal strength of 15. So basically, that's the nine, I'm pretty sure. Let me check if it's actually, no, that's seven, okay. So that one over there, that one on the top left corner, is the button for 9, and that runs into this repeater, and then that one over there is 8 and runs into this block and this redstone dust. That one over there is 7, this one's 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And that basically gives the amount of pulses that it needs. 
Now, there are a few other things that it does. Mainly, it activates the cursor shifter thing through this long delay over here, but we'll explain that later. But what it also does is it goes into this cool circuit that I made. It's also in my original calculator. Basically, what it does is it slows down like the clock, well, the speed of the pulses because they go in really fast, as you saw from the demonstration of the pulse multiplier over there. So basically what this does, it dispenses the items into this dropper, and now we have like this little smart dropper thing, and it acts goes into these two pistons, which add the numbers or subtract them, which I'll, again, explain later. And when once it dispenses those blocks, it goes into these hoppers, back into this dropper, so you can use it again. So that's basically how these inputs work. And that's only the inputs, we still got a lot to go. So probably the next thing I should explain is the cursor system. So this little cursor thing on the top with the little lights and stuff. So I'm going to explain how that works. So basically, after you select a number, it goes into this little circuit over here, which is basically kind of like the same thing as attaching a redstone torch to this, but longer. So basically, this will turn off when a number is selected because this thing will pulse a bunch of times. But then when it is unselected, this torch will turn on because there's no more like redstone going through that. And this piston will activate, which has an observer attached by the end with some slime blocks. And then we have a bunch of four tick repeaters and it goes into this little panel because remember in the demonstration, the zero automatically shifted the cursor to the right and what that does is if we just go through here it will activate this piston which will give a two tick observer pulse into this pulse extender and these two torches will deactivate all these hoppers will unlock and then the item in this hopper will start flowing into the next digit which is this piston which is if we just come out here the second cursor over there. Now how the little display thing works is, let's say this one's selected, there is a piston with a redstone block which goes into this line all the way over here and it goes all the way to the top and there's just a redstone line over here which activates the lamps like that. So that's basically how the shifting works, but how does it actually like shift the numbers? So that's where the addition and subtraction circuits come in. So whenever, like let's say this first one is activated, which it is, it'll activate this piston, the display over there, and it'll activate this piston. Now, as you can see, this one's purple and this one's red. So I'm just gonna tell you now, anything that's purple is addition and anything that's red is subtraction, except for the reset circuit. So I'll tell you what red is the proper red. So basically, if we just go all the way over here and I, can make it to the buttons. We got the addition button and the subtraction button. And we also have this RS Norlatch over here, which corresponds to like each button. So basically what that does, and it also does the cursor reset, that's what these pistons are for. And it will run into this black line, which makes this um, the shift thingy reset and yeah, I won't explain that because it's not really that hard. You can figure that out on your own later. Yay. Okay, doesn't matter. So basically, um, let's say addition is chosen and it already by default is always. So this green line will activate and it will activate if I can find it because this is a really tight redstone contraption. It'll activate this piston. So this piston will extend pushing this block if it ever is pushed there. And that means that addition is selected. So that means, like I said earlier, these pistons that activate, it will go through the block. And since this block is in front, it will go through all of these repeaters. And if that specific decimal is chosen, like this one, it'll go through the block and into the addition pulse thingy, which is just running into the display. So. That's how the addition part works. And the subtraction thing works basically exactly the same. And let's see if I can just go over here. Uh, the subtraction line will just run over here. 
and it'll go into this piston, and the addition one will deactivate because it's an RS neural latch. And now this piston is extended, and now these repeaters are going to be activating the digits instead of those ones, because the pulse is going through this block instead of the purple block. And now the display is also really easy, it's just a, another line running into the, the plus sign and the minus sign, not really that difficult. And speaking of displays, the overflow, kind of the same thing. So this orange circuit on each of the displays is the carry line. And if this carry line is ever activated, it just toggles this piston, which just turns these lamps on, which means that it reached the max number. So that's just how the little displays work and the addition and subtraction works. So now I'm pretty sure that all we have to, all that's left is the reset. And oh boy, it resets a lot. So basically, when you push the reset button, if I just go down here, I'm not going to push it because I don't want to, and I already showed you anyways. So this is just the input panel, very similar to all the other ones, except this one can have a piston because it's not going into any kind of pulse multiplier. And it resets a lot of things because you can see there's a lot of repeaters going in different directions. Okay, so we're going, we're going to go from the easiest thing to the hardest thing. So let's see, easiest thing, it resets. This R snore latch by just activating these droppers and it will uh, dispense the item into the bottom ones and these both of these comparators will be comparators will be turned off. So that's basically how it resets the displays. Now it will go over here and basically how it sets this thing to default, like the addition line by default, is this really cool circuit and you know what, I'll just show it because why not. So basically what this does is it activates a four tick pulse, it retracts it, and then spits it out right back. So it's a really cool circuit. So basically how it works is it's a four tick pulse activating the piston, and it goes into this um, observer line over here. And then when it turns off, this observer line updates again, and it gives it just enough time for it to like retract and then spit it out. So that's how it like does the addition by default reset. So that's the second reset thing. It also resets the cursor, which is this black line over here. And basically what this black line does is that it will activate this observer and this piston will um, extend its cauldron up, up. Ugh. It will extend the cauldron and this comparator is activated. So now these torches are deactivated so now all of these hoppers are unlocked and the item can move freely but not completely as you'll see later so basically you also might notice that only these front hoppers are activated and not these back ones so once these hoppers are deactivated the item will flow all the way until it reaches this specific hopper this comparator will activate activating this piston with the observer and it will send a pulse all the way down the same line it will retract the cauldron, all these hoppers will lock again, and then uh, we just have to wait for the item to go all through these hoppers and back into this first one. So that's basically how the decimal, well, the cursor reset works. I just explained it even though I said I wouldn't, but meh, whatever. And the last thing that the reset resets is the displays, because it has to reset the displays. Now, first thing I'll explain. So basically, um, how it works is that all of these are set to zeros and all of these pistons are extended. Now, while you're doing some addition and subtraction, this is like why this is such a pain for me. These things can go up and down and up and down and toggle the clocks and then it will start resetting when you don't want to. So I made this like extra layer of security kind of thing. So it doesn't reset while you're using it to add or subtract. So that's just a little short notice thing okay otherwise let's just explain how it resets so basically what you do is when it activates this will extend its observer and this redstone block will retract and this other redstone block will retract and then all of these pistons will retract and the sand will fall and because this is glass it can't go through but then when the sand falls well concrete powder same difference when it falls it will be a solid block and then this clock will start cycling Basically what that clock does is it goes into this piston with the observer and it'll activate this red wire which is technically also a subtraction line so I just made it red anyways 
and it will go through this hopper and start subtracting. So once it's zero, it'll go nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then when it's hit zero again, as you can see, there's a second redstone block in all of these tapes and this piston will extend. The cauldron will activate this comparator and this piston will activate down here, which will also, um, because it will activate, this block will be powered, powering this redstone and pulsing this piston again. So that will spit out its glass and sand. Now it will only spit it out. So that means you have to wait for all of these to be basically zero. And once they're all zero, as in all of these have stopped, like, what am I, what's the word? All of these have stopped running, like the, the clocks have all stopped running. There's this AND gate over here, which basically uh, sees if all of them are zeros. And once it sees that all of them are zeros, it will extend this, which will spit out the block again. And it will also like add this layer of security, I guess. And this is also part of it. Basically, it just stops the entire thing and it resets the toggle so you can use the clear button again. Now the bugs that I already told you, thus the, the cursor bug, I don't really know what it is. It could just be server lag, but the bug where it won't reset once properly is just because, because it's one and this thing runs on subtraction, all it needs to do is just subtract once. But because like this clock isn't like instant, like fast already, it will pulse like an extra time and like go to either nine or eight, depends on how bad the server is. But yeah, that's basically how the bugs work. And I guess if I got everything, I'm just gonna look around maybe, see if I didn't miss anything. But yeah, that's basically how the entire calculator works. So hope you enjoyed this pretty long video. It's probably like, 20 almost probably half an hour long by now but yeah hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next one goodbye